Hello, sports fans. As I know, I'm back with another baseball video for your entertainment. It's a great day for baseball. It's a great day for baseball fans. It's a great day for people who have pulled rare Shohei Otani autograph cards. It's a great day for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Shohei Otani is innocent. And we've had a lot of conjecture about this, including on this channel. We've had a lot of conversation about it. I really appreciate all of you who have joined us for these videos. We, this is the fourth one we've done. We've had about 10,000 combined views, which for a channel that's less than a year old and has just over 1,000 subscribers is pretty awesome. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have not subscribed yet, please consider doing that because we do baseball card videos almost every day, and we have opinion videos, and we have information videos, and you've just got a guy who's passionate about baseball and baseball cards and wants to share that passion with you. So before we get into the details of this situation, which is pretty interesting and pretty exciting, again, I'm very glad you guys are here, and let's talk about all of the new things that we have learned. So, Shohei has been found by the U.S. Attorney for Central California, by the Internal Revenue Service, by the Department of Homeland Security, to be a victim of a massive embezzlement of $16 million. Originally, we thought it was four and a half. $16 million. Ipe, his interpreter, won $142 million placing sports bets. Can you imagine? $142 million. Only one small problem. He lost $182 million. So there's about a $40.7 million delta between the two numbers when you look at the exact dollars and cents of it. So... One of the ways that he took care of that $40 million debt was by embezzling $16 million from Shohei Otani. How could he do that, you might ask? And that's a reasonable question. And one of the reasons why we did a video on the possible reasons why Shohei might be guilty is because any logical, rational person would go, how can you lose $4.5 million and not notice? Now we know it's $16 million. But a lot of stuff has come out because the federal authorities saw Shohei's phone and the federal authorities also had recorded phone calls from all of Shohei's banks where Ipe is impersonating Shohei Otani. Now think about it. Most of us who are thinking about this or who are watching this video probably have bank accounts. You probably have multiple bank accounts. Most adults do. You probably got a checking account, a savings account at the very least. All right. What happens when the bank suspects fraud? They call you up. They want to know things. They want to know your address. They want to know your social security number. They want to know the passcodes to your bank accounts. They want to know the account numbers. Who would have access to that other than you? Well, for most of us ordinary citizens, the answer, of course, is nobody. But if you're Shohei Otani and you are making tens of millions of dollars, now hundreds of millions, in a new country that is foreign to you where you do not speak the language in the early days, hardly at all, and nowadays, he speaks it a little, and he understands it pretty well, but, you know, not originally. It's come out, who's the guy that set up the accounts for him? Imagine if you're American and you move to Japan, and you don't speak Japanese, but you have massive financial resources, you would probably hire someone to be your interpreter to help you out, to help you navigate this new environment. And that's exactly what Shohei Otani did. Actually, the Los Angeles Angels did it. So we've all know by now that Ipe lied about a lot of things. He never worked for the Red Sox. He never graduated from college. He didn't get vetted well by the Angels, nor apparently by Shohei and his people. There were not enough checks and balances. That's one thing. If there's anything that Shohei did wrong, is that he didn't have enough checks and balances in place. If you are a highly successful person, you've got to have checks and balances. You've got to have people checking on one another to make sure that everything's okay. At my business, my assistant does not have a credit card in her name. Why is that? It would make a lot of sense because she makes a lot of our purchases. But who's the person that's going over the receipts? Who's the person that's looking for suspicious activity? Who's the person that's looking for fraud? Her. So it doesn't make sense for her to have a credit card because she has to be checking everybody else's credit cards and making sure that they're not stealing from the business. It makes sense. So maybe Shohei was a little naive. Maybe he trusted Ipe too much. Now, one thing that people have been talking about is that Ipe manipulated and got into a position with Shohei where he could take advantage of him. That is entirely possible. Ipe might just be a straight-up con man. However, and this is what we've been doing for the last month, 
we've been exploring different possibilities. I'm not saying one thing is true or not true. I just think it's interesting. This is obviously an interesting situation. It's not normal. But think about this for a second. It's possible, and I'm not saying that Ipe is not a con man. It's possible, though, being someone who's in recovery and being someone who works in the recovery space, it's entirely possible when people are in active addiction, they do all kinds of crazy and wild stuff. And they will sometimes do it to people that they love. And they're not trying to hurt that person, even though on the surface you go, how could you not know what you're doing? How could you not know that you're doing harm? But you become obsessed, you become kind of crazed. And it's possible that Ipe did a long con with Shohei and never cared about him and always wanted to get access to his money so he could do this. However, if you think about it, as someone pointed out in one of the many articles and many videos I've watched and many comments I've read about this, someone pointed out if he hadn't gambled it, he probably would have gotten away with it, at least for a while. Why not just flee the country? You've got $16 million. Why not just flee the country? Go to Brazil, you know, go underground, go into hiding. They'll never find you. If he was a con man, that's what he would have done, one would think, because it was only because they were looking into the bookie that they found all this out. So I think it's also possible, and I'm not defending the man. Obviously, what he did was horrible. It's possible that Ipe really, truly did care about Shohei and that he wasn't lying and trying to become his friend. And, you know, they were very close by all accounts. Addiction does awful things to a person. And it's possible that he just started gambling on his own. He wasn't poor. He's making $300,000 a year. He might have just started gambling on his own with his own money. And then he gets into trouble. He starts dipping a little into Shohei's money and a little more and a little more and then a little more. You know, there's, there's a transcript of, uh, well, not a transcript. There's a record of a text message with the bookie where Ipe is saying, I just need you to give me one more bump. As an addictions counselor, that's disturbing, but it's also very familiar. Just one more, just one more. And then I'm done, I promise, just one more. You know, the, they say that addicts have to hit bottom. This is obviously a really low bottom for Ipe. People do all kinds of crazy stuff and it's always one last time. And sometimes that one last time, you end up dead. Sometimes that one last time you end up in jail. It's a horrible thing. So I talked in the very first video I did about this, about if you are struggling with addiction, please get help. So I have two horses in this race. One horse is that I did pull a Shohei Otani autograph to 25 out of 2022 Top Series 2. This is primarily a baseball card channel, although I love baseball, so I like to do these kind of videos too. Let's talk about baseball cards for a second. Obviously, if you bought the slump, when there was speculation, good for you. You probably made a lot of money. I wish I had. I wish I'd done that. I don't typically invest in baseball cards because I want it to remain a joyful hobby for me. I don't want to be getting agitated about players doing well and not doing well and you know making money, losing money. That might change later in my life. I don't know. But I didn't buy a bunch of Shohei cards on speculation that he was innocent, even though I wasn't sure You know, the information wasn't in, but I was kind of leaning toward that he was innocent. But if you own Shohei Otani cards, you are psyched. And you're so psyched that you should like that video because I haven't even asked you guys to like the video yet. But please like the video if you haven't. If you're still here, you probably like it. So anyway, if you have Shohei Otani cards, you're, you're stoked because he's not getting suspended. He's not getting arrested. He's not going to be banned for life. This isn't a Wander Franco situation. So that's great. I mean, it never was a Wander Franco situation because obviously what Wander did is exponentially worse than gambling. But the point is, is that Wander's career is over and his baseball cards are worthless now. Shohei's cards are going to just do as well as ever. And he's hitting extremely well. He's leading the league in doubles. He's having a good year. Despite all of this mess, that tells you how much focus the man has. So that's really good news. The other horse I have in the race is that I'm in recovery and I want people that are in active addiction to get into recovery. Why? Because life is much better and life is possible. Life is possible. Gambling addiction can kill you. So again, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction today, I just want to tell you that there's hope. And that's not what this channel is about, but I want you to know that I believe in you and you can do it. You might need to find a 12-step program. You might need to go to therapy. You might need to go to treatment. 
maybe there's something else you can do to change your behavior. I don't know, but it is possible. I feel terrible for both of these guys. I feel terrible for Shohei because he lost his best friend and someone stole $16 million from him. Obviously, he's the victim. But I feel terrible for Ipe, too. I mean, the guy completely ruined his life. What he did was wrong. Do not misunderstand me. What he did was wrong. But to get that deep in the throes of addiction where you ruin your friendship with your best friend, you lose a $300,000 a year job where you had an amazing lifestyle. He was famous. Now he's infamous. It's terrible. So he was making an average of 26 bets per day, which is amazing. He made 19,000 bets. That's amazing. And people have been speculating, well, he was with Shohei all day. How did Shohei not know? Well, I don't think that the two guys were sleeping in the same bed or even the same room. He probably did a lot of it at night or when he first woke up in the morning. But you can also be on your phone and nobody knows what you're doing. You know, and nowadays you can place bets. You can do all kinds of stuff. So that's what happened. It's it's over. It's over. The U.S. attorney, the IRS, and DHS are not all going to conspire to protect Shohei. This is way, way, way above the pay grade of Rob Manfred or anybody else with MLB. Shohei is not being protected. Shohei is the victim here. And he has been completely found innocent. Like I said at the outset of the video, in my mind, it's a great day for baseball. It's a tough day for Shohei because he lost $16 million, but it's also a good day because he's now been found innocent and he can go on with his life. He just got married. He's got this huge new contract. His arm is getting better from his second TJ. Hopefully, he can put this behind him. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, when you have a $700 million contract, I can't believe I'm saying this, but $16 million is not that much money to him. It's a lot of money to us mere mortals, but I hope that this can be put behind us, and I hope that the sport will just carry on. It's such an exciting time to be a baseball fan. There's so many superstars. You have Shohei, you have Ronald Acuna Jr., you have Mookie Betts, you have Aaron Judge. So many exciting superstars we get to watch right now. And there's so many up-and-comers. Jackson Holiday just made his major league debut the other day. There's way more guys in the pipeline. Michael Harris II is amazing and just getting started. There's so much to be excited about as a baseball fan. So... I'm a huge baseball fan. I'm excited. I'm glad that this is the outcome. I'm glad that we don't have to spend the next year and many years talking about, you know, Shohei being a scumbag and, you know, how the most preternatural talent of our generation or perhaps ever is soiled his reputation. I said in an early video when he's giving his Hall of Fame speech, no one's going to remember this. It'll be a footnote. Someone in the comments said he's not going to the Hall of Fame. Well, I beg to differ. I think that Shohei Otani, as soon as he makes it to 10 years of service time, which is one of the requirements, he's in. It doesn't matter. He could retire that day. He's in. Because no one, including Babe Ruth, has been a better pitcher and hitter combined. Of course, Babe Ruth's career stats as a hitter are better than Shohei's. But Babe Ruth only pitched for a couple years, and he was very good. But Shohei has already pitched more than Babe Ruth did. He is already the all-time greatest two-way baseball player. I'm not saying that he's better than Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth played way longer and hit 715 home runs. 714 home runs. Hank Aaron broke his record with 715. 714 home runs is <laughs> a disgusting number. Babe Ruth, obviously, a greater overall player, a greater overall impact on the game. But if you just look at the pitching and the hitting together, no one else has ever done what Shohei is doing. And I think it's very good for the game. It's created a lot of new fans. I'm not a Dodgers guy. I don't really care one way or the other that he signed with the Dodgers. I do respect the Dodgers for spending money because my hometown team is not doing that, unfortunately. Although they did just sign Sedan Rafaela to a long-term contract and they tied up Brian Bello. And I appreciate that if they can tie up Casas, tie up Roman Anthony, tie up Marcelo Mayer. Great. And, you know, we're, we've learned from the Trevor Story situation. It's not always great when they sign someone to a free agent. I just wish they would take a middle road and sign someone while they rebuild. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm going to wrap it up, guys. 
I need to go have coffee with my sweetheart and go to work. I hope that you guys are having a great day. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. If you are a baseball card fan or a fan of the channel, which you must be if you're here at the end of this video, make sure to check out all my new videos, including the 2024 Topps Heritage opening. I missed it, but we pulled a awesome error card at the beginning that's going for four to $500 on eBay. So go check that out and have an awesome rest of your day. Oh, I almost forgot. There's memberships available to the channel now. They're only $8.99 a month. There's tons of great perks involved with that. Check it out on the homepage of the website. I'm still waiting for my first member. Whoever is the first member of the channel is going to be a legend. They're going to go down. And now my loves you history. They're going to get shouted out constantly. They're going to be the OG of this channel. Like Jason VT Sports Guy, who is the OG of people who were commenting and supporting me right from the jump. So... You guys have an awesome rest of your day and keep that big smile on your face because Shohei is innocent. Baseball is awesome. And no mile loves you. We'll see you next time. Hey, this is Justin Lawrence from the Colorado Rockies. You're watching No Mile Loves You.